Hello, uh, here we are. This is Open Education Week at Colorado State University in Pueblo, Colorado. And with me, I have Dr. Heidi Reynolds. Oh, oh you're going to have to correct me on that one. But she right. is Assistant Professor of Sociology. I'm Alegria Rivadeneira. I am co-PI on a grant that we have for OER. And we are doing these interviews in order to share some of the joyous news we have here. Welcome. Welcome Thank to you. our interview. Thank you for um, agreeing to talk with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Um, yeah, as Alegria said, I'm uh, Dr. Heidi Reynolds Stenson, and I'm an assistant professor in the sociology uh, and criminology department. Um, and I am in my fourth year here at CSU Pueblo. And um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, and thank you for doing that a lot better than I did. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask you first what brought you to OER? Yeah, um, so I teach a lot of the core classes um, in our department. So I teach intro to sociology, intro to criminology research methods, and especially in my intro to sociology uh, classes that I started teaching as soon as I got here, um, I wasn't really satisfied with the options out there for commercial textbooks. Um, and one of the reasons why I wasn't satisfied with them was because of the cost for the students. And I had students um, who were definitely struggling to be able to afford the textbook. My very first semester, I had a student who um, seemed, uh, seemed to be bright and interested in the uh, material, but she was failing every one of the reading quizzes. Uh, and so I talked to her after, you know, the first few um, and tried to figure out what was uh, going on and um, found out that, you know, it was because she had not been able to afford the textbook and she was, you know, a working student and paying for everything herself and she couldn't afford the textbook. And so she was taking these quizzes kind of blindly without the material that they were based on. And so um, I gave her uh, my, uh, you know, textbook that, that the, um, you know, textbook company had given me as my instructor copy um, to use for the rest of the semester because, you know, I didn't want that to be something that was affecting her grade and her experience in the class and her learning. And um, that was definitely a wake up call for me that, okay, I, I need to make sure that um, that's not going to be a barrier for other students. And so um, it took me some time to to find what OER textbook I thought was the best fit um, for the class. But once I did that and, and started thinking about what I wanted to do to really adapt it and, and make it um, right for my class, uh, then I knew that I wanted to do that. I went to a workshop um, about OER a few years ago. And um, out of that, I just really felt committed to um, making sure that I had low cost or ideally no cost um, uh, materials for my students that were high quality and I really appreciate the fact that um, they are uh, something that we can contribute to and we can adapt and work you know even with the commercial textbooks that cost a lot I was still always having to um, you know supplement what was in there and you know I'd do that in class anyways I was already writing material to sort of fill in where I saw the gaps or to update things um, and so I'm already doing that work of kind of, um, you know, working to um, improve the materials in the class anyways. So I figured why not um, do that with a textbook where I can actually add it to the text and other people can use it as well. So it's not just for my class. Um, and so uh, I especially, the, the part that I found especially, you know, a little lacking in the um, open source um, textbook that I found for the intro to sociology class was the chapter on social movements and that is my area of expertise and so I, um, you know, immediately started thinking about what areas I felt needed more uh, uh, you know, expansion and also um, what could be updated to try to really bring it into the current time. Because that's another thing that's always difficult, you know, with textbooks, what commercial or OER is that, you know, especially sociology it's, and talk about something like social movements. You know, this social movements chapter had no mention of Black Lives Matter, which 
could, you know, now consider probably the biggest and broadest movement that we've seen in the United States. And so, um, you know, finding ways to bring that in to really bring the material to life is important. And, you know, and that's part of why it's difficult with commercial textbooks where they're always coming out with new editions. And it's like, you know, a way that, you know, they can keep making money, but also some of those updates need to happen because when you're, especially when you're talking about something like sociology, it's always changing. You want to have up-to-date statistics when you're talking um, about these issues that, that are so dynamic. And so with OER, you don't have to, you know, buy the newest edition to make sure that it's talking about current events or has the most up-to-date statistics on things. Um, we can change that ourselves um, as well as, you know, fill in, you know, gaps in, in the discussion of theories or different things that we might see as, as not um, being as uh, developed in the text as we would like. So um, going through that process of um, revising and adding to the um, social movements chapter um, has been really rewarding and I'm excited to now be able to use that text with that revised chapter um, in my classes going forward and then also to be able to put it out there for other people to use as well. So um, I like that it's a growing thing that we can all contribute to and, and make, uh, make better all the time um, and that it's uh, no cost to our students. So I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think you really have touched on so many of the advantages, you know, because it's not only the money, but actually being able to tailor these mm -hmm. resources right. to our specific student populations. And mm -hmm. I had not thought about that with sociology. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. things are happening so quickly right. and those updates can be done on the spot by experts like you. So I am so glad that you shared the part about you adding this chapter on social movements mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people think they have to write a whole book, right? right. And what yeah. you did is you adopted a, mm -hmm. a good textbook mm -hmm. and then you adapted and uh, remixed it perhaps a little and, and then added your own um, uh, parts. So yeah. I, I really love that you uh, went into that. I think people watching this are really going to enjoy seeing that it doesn't have to be um, enormous. Yeah. You can pinpoint something, especially on your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. You mentioned yeah. um, uh, some areas of deep satisfaction mm -hmm. um, engaging in this program, in this um, project. Uh, do you care to uh, elaborate a little bit more on what are some of the things that uh, gave you the most joy about doing this project? Yeah, um, I mean, even, you know, I haven't yet used the adapted um, the adapted uh, text because we're still working on that. But um, even just with adopting the OER text, so I've been using that for for two years now. I think um, that it was, you know, seeing the students like relief on the first day when I say, you know, that you don't have to buy a textbook for this class. And um, at first, I really didn't know. Um, how that how some students would receive that I know that some students might really want the hard copy and there are options to be able to still purchase it at a lower cost than a commercial textbook but not necessarily a lower cost than a used commercial textbook so it's like you know I was worried about that it maybe wouldn't be uh, a huge improvement in terms of the cost and access if students really preferred uh, having a hard copy and you know and I can understand that I still I really like to read out of physical books and so like you know I had some like questions and concerns about how well it would be received by the students would this really make a difference um, as I was hoping in terms of the access and and um, without detracting you know from the learning in any way and um, and I really found that you know it it was very rare to have students who you know, we're like, no, I'm, I, I'll, I'll get the hard copy and they can, you know, still do that. But most students were more than happy to use it in digital form. It's got some advantages that way because it's searchable. Um, you know, you have this hyperlink table of contents. It's easy to jump to the chapter, you know, that you want to read or a particular part. There's some, there's definitely some, um, you know, interactive features and things that are um, built in to the, um, online textbook and then they can also download it and then have that searchable PDF and so I 
um, you know, I, I found pretty quickly that 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 my concerns were not really um, didn't really you know uh, turn out to um, to be as big of a concern as I thought they might be, and the students were really um, really happy uh, that that they didn't have to um, add another textbook onto all of the other expenses and expenses that they might have for other classes. So I always just appreciate that every semester kind of seeing, you know, them uh, have that, that relief and knowing that just that that's one less thing that they have to worry about um, is really rewarding to me. And, you know, and part of that goes back to the fact that, you know, I was a working class college student myself who really struggled financially, put myself through school and, uh, you know, I remember uh, really being really upset by seeing what what I had to pay for for textbooks. Like my first semester of college, I remember I cried when I found out. I was like, "Wait, I didn't know this. I don't. I don't think I can do this." Like I, you know, it just all of a sudden felt like something that just wasn't attainable because I I I just didn't I didn't uh, anticipate how expensive the books were going to be, and I was you know paying for everything myself and. So it was, um, and it, you know, continued throughout college to be just this, you know, additional stressor trying to figure out how to um, save up enough before each semester so that I wouldn't have to buy the books late and be behind it, which, you know, to me was like my worst nightmare. I was like such a, you know, just, uh, you know, I wanted to be just, uh, you know, really a strong student in all my classes. And, and it was stressful to feel like this, you know, cost thing um, issue was a was a barrier to me, you know, being able to focus on what I should been focusing on as a student, which was like, you know, the material and learning and not be stressing about um, costs. And so in that way, I, you know, I, I remember what that felt like and I want, I don't want my students to, um, have that additional stressor. I know that a lot of them have a lot, a lot going on. It's even without the um, textbook costs, you know, higher education is really expensive. And, you know, so I just, I don't want to add one more thing onto that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, this idea of taking stress away from mm -hmm. the students and actually right. facilitating their learning in any way right. possible. Um, it's just fantastic. And I, I absolutely identify with that satisfaction mm -hmm. for sure. Now, obviously, um, there are always challenges to doing this. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced um, mm -hmm. going, you know, adopting this mm -hmm. textbook and doing your adaptation. And um, then maybe you can tell us a little bit about some um, ideas that you can give to people who are mm -hmm hoping to embark in a voyage just like yours. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, definitely there was a fair amount of work up front in terms of ad adopting and switching um, from the textbook I had been using. I had, you know, my quizzes and um, tests and um, PowerPoint presentations and all of this stuff built around the text that I uh, used from the beginning. Um, and so there was, there was a fair amount of really almost going back to like teaching the class for the first time, not quite, but you know, um, really doing a lot of new preparation to make it all fit with the new textbook. And so, you know, that was definitely an investment that I had to put in uh, up front, but to me it was worth it. And I knew that once I got over that hump that it would, um, it would be worth it for me and my students. And so, you know, that meant a little more work then, but then since then it, it's, um, you know, they they offer test banks and, and maybe not all of them do, but at least a textbook that uh, open source textbook that I'm using, you know, offers many of the same materials um, to, to build off of and draw on that they, um, that the commercial textbooks do. So, you know, I was, um, able to make use of those things as well. So I didn't have to completely start from scratch and, you know, could use some of their um, test questions and things like that. So it, it really wasn't too bad. I, I was worried that it was going to, to be even more. Um, but once, um, once I got rolling with the new text, it's, it's really hasn't been um, 
I haven't found it to be, you know, any more challenging um, than working with a commercial textbook. And, um, and I would say one recommendation I would have people that are considering this is um, if you're going to be teaching something for the first time, that's a great uh, time to do it because then you're not having to do that like remaking of the class like I did. Um, you know, I wish I would, that's one thing I wish I would have done is just done it from the beginning. Um, but I think that sometimes, uh, I mean, especially for me as a, I was a brand new professor when I started here, I was, there was a, sort of some comfort in using the, a commercial textbook that, that I felt like was, um, you know, widely adopted and, you know, popular and sort of had been, you know, vetted by others and that um, I, and that they had all these resources and support to kind of help, you know, set up the class. And so to me, that felt comfortable to start there, you know, even though I knew in the back of my mind that I don't know about this, you know, these expensive commercial textbooks, but um, I think that, uh, if I could go back, I would have just, you know, not, you know, actually the open source textbooks have a lot of support too. And they, um, you know, and they're, they can be really great as well. And you can add to them. And so it's, uh, you know, um, if, if I would have gone with that from the beginning, when I first started teaching the class, then um, I think that would have, that would have made it um, easier. And so I guess I would just encourage people not to be, not to be intimidated by um, using an open source textbook. It doesn't have to be more work or less um, support um, than using a commercial textbook. And if you can use it from the start of, uh, of a course, um, then it's going to just be that much, much easier. Yes. Oh, I agree. You know, but a lot of new professors, especially we've mm -hmm. been trained, you know, they're not even aware many times about mm -hmm. OER yeah. or there are rules in their department that they want to follow. So as you, mm -hmm. uh, as you advance, it becomes a little easier to make those right. decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. And in your yeah. case, I know you um, got a textbook that is widely, widely used, uh, mm -hmm. very, very high quality. A lot of people equate OER because it's free. They think they're not going to be high quality right yeah really amazing amazing resources out there so that mm -hmm. is a wonderful thing yeah yeah I was now, very impressed with it once I started looking at OER stuff like, oh yeah there's these these are you know there's some really good ones out there and the one that I'm using I've been very happy with so Yes. Wow. Thank you so much for giving us a little glimpse mm -hmm. of uh, what it has been like for you to engage with OER and adopting, adapting, and uh, contributing to mm -hmm. this amazing movement of open education. Mm, we hope that you continue doing this and that you inspire others. And we are just so grateful that you took the time to be with us today. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye.